Reverb. Yes, it's one of the most useful and commonly used audio effects in all of music production. But what do all of these dials mean? How do I use it in GarageBand? That's what we're going to cover in this video. Let's go. There's a lot to cover, so there's timestamps down in the description if you want to jump around, and you'll also find links to a whole bunch of other videos about producing your best music here in GarageBand. The first way to add reverb is to use an audio recorder track. If we tap on audio recorder, we've got the lead vocals here, and you'll see that we have voice hall. We can actually use this to dial in the amount of reverb we'd like to hear on this track. And this vocal hole is actually connected to our track reverb, which is here in our plugins and EQ if you want to adjust it more. And that's what we're gonna cover in this next section. To add the track reverb effect to any track, whether it's an audio track, MIDI track, or drummer track, tap on the mixer icon in the top left and then tap on plugins and EQ. Now tap on the edit button. And if you've got a free slot, hit the plus button here. If you've got an effect you need to delete, you can tap it and delete it to create a slot. Now tap the green plus button and select track reverb from the effects tab. And you'll be presented with the six different options you can use to dial in your reverb sound. Let's go through these one by one. But to make it clearer and easier to understand, let's use this vocal track. So if we turn the reverb off by tapping on the blue button, this is what the track sounds like with no reverb. Let's turn on the track reverb by tapping on the power button to the left and it sounds like this. And you can hear it creates that reverberation. It sounds like it's in a space, like a room or a hall. That's what reverb's all about, but we can adjust that sound using these settings. First, the pre-delay. This is how many milliseconds before the reverb actually kicks in. If we turn this delay up, it's gonna take longer between when the sound is originally heard and when the reverberation commences. Let's take a listen. <sighs> Next up is the spread, and this determines how much stereo spread you hear, and it kind of works a little bit in reverse. If we start with it at 200, and I'll dial it down, you'll hear that we start to hear a wider stereo sound. Ha, ha. So you can experiment with that to work out how much width you want on your reverb. Next up is reverb time. This is how much time the reverb will hang around for. Everything from a very short reverb time like this. <sighs> to a really long tail like this. The high cut filter allows you to reduce the amount of reverb over a certain frequency. So if we cut the reverb off, say right down here at 1200 Hertz, we get a much darker sound like this. Because only audio under 1200 Hertz is actually being reverberated. If instead you want a brighter reverb sound, you guessed it, you turn it up. Ha <sighs> Finally, the dry and wet dials here. Dry is your original signal. So with the dry at 100% and the wet at zero, you're hearing zero of the reverb. Ha. Flip it around, put the dry down to 0% and the wet up to 100, and now you're hearing only the reverb. Ha. And this is great if you want to start hearing the effect of changing some of your other settings. Especially things like your high cut and your spread. However, for most of your tracks, you'll want to use something around about the 80-20 rule for your wet and your dry signal so that you've got some of that original sound and some of the reverb. <sighs> There's one more place you can add reverb and that's your master effects. Now, the reason this is here is that this used to be the only reverb we had to adjust it. We just use this slider to say how much we want and then we can actually change the effect by tapping there, going into reverb and choosing what type of space we would like to use. And this is going to add even more reverb to this track. And one of the best uses of the master reverb is to add a little bit of reverb to all of your tracks to make them all sound like they're in the same space. There you have it, all the ways you can use track reverb and master reverb to enhance your projects here in GarageBand. I hope you found this one useful. More videos in the description and I'll see you next time.